Hello and welcome to this tutorial on creating a simple PHP strategy game. In this first part I'm going to go over the basics of setting up your server and getting the basic website layout down. Now to set up your server we're going to download WAMP server. This creates a local host on your computer that you can use to host your PHP files which are needed. So once you go to wampserver.com, I'll include the link in the description, you can download the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version depending on what it is your operating system can use. So once you download that and install it, the base directory for your server is going to be the C drive, then the WAMP folder, then the www folder. Now what we're going to do is create a subfolder in that www folder called game. That's where we're going to host our game. To create web pages, you can use any sort of text editor or IDE and you can it can be anything from Notepad to Dreamweaver what I'm what I'm going to be using in this tutorial is PHP Designer 7 and I've been using this for a few years very user friendly easy to use you can download a free trial and you can also buy a personal license for roughly forty dollars so once you once you've installed your WAMP server and have it running you can go to your localhost, which is http colon slash slash localhost slash, and you'll come up with a web page that looks like this. So this is going to say everything about your server configuration, any tools you have, any of your projects, which are essentially just folders within that www folder. So as you can see here, I already have game. And if we go to localhost slash game slash, you'll see that it's just a blank page. So once I open up my PHP Designer 7, you'll see that I have index.php and I have it saved in my game folder. As you can see, it's a blank page. So what we're going to do now is create a simple website. So in order to do that, you're going to need HTML tags, which basically say, hey, I'm a website. Next up, you're going to have the header tags. The header tags will include things such as the title, which we'll just call your game. As you can see up here, it just has the location of the website. If we refresh it, bam, your game. So that's the title of it. Up next, we're going to have the link tag, which is going to link a CSS, a cascading style sheet, to our website, which will you know, do fancy colors and what have you. So we do link and then href is the location of the style sheet. We relate this to a style sheet and the type is going to be text slash CSS. Oopsie. So that's it for the header file or for the header tag I should say. Up next we're going to create the body tag and this will have everything that will be displayed in a website. So if we say text here and we refresh it, bam, you'll see text here. So what we're going to do now is create the general layout of our website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create the website using div tags and they're kind of like divider tags. They will group things into sections and make it easier for you. It's a lot easier to use than tables, but I will be using tables eventually, just not for the layout, just because it looks pretty messy. So what we're going to do is, first off, here's the div tag. And we're going to give this an ID, and we're going to call that header. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a header section, a content section, a navigation section, and a footer section. So, div ID, this is going to be 
what's going to happen is the navigation and content are going to be in a div called container because you'll see in a second why but this is just how it's going to be so we have our navigation and then we also have our let's see content then outside of this div container we're going to have our footer div now if we refresh the page you'll see there's nothing there but if we add something like one two for the navigation three for the content and four for the hooder footer you'll see that we have our divs right here so what we're going to do is we're going to create our style.css file and this is going to be as you can already see it's linked here so no problems there so what we're going to do is we're going to style all these divs and in order to do that you have to use the sharp sign and the ID of the div so this is essentially what it looks like and if you're using classes in your div tags then you would use a period but for IDs you're going to use sharp signs so what we're going to do is first actually background color this is the background color of the div now what you can do is you can use simple colors or you can go more advanced with hex colors I'll be using hex colors. You can Google hex colors and you'll get lists upon lists of them. So, what I'm going to use is this color right here. Now, if we go back here, you'll see that the background color is what I chose. And But we don't want this to be all the way across the page. We want it to be only a certain amount. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a width to it and let's just say 800 pixels that sounds like a good width so as you can see it's going all across the page when we refresh it there it's down to 800 pixels so now what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this for the remaining ones and let me just add in the container div here because that's going to be separate we have navigation content and footer now the header and footer are going to be 800 pixels each for the navigation and content we want them to be side by side so we're gonna have different lengths let's just make navigation 180 pixels and the content will be 620 pixels this way 180 and 600 gives you 800. So now, let me just change these and so now once we refresh the page we can see that we have the different colors and the navigation and content divs are two different lengths which is good but now we have to get them next to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in floats and floats just say that you're next to each other. So I'm going to be using left floats in this and we refresh the page and now you can see that the navigation and the content are next to each other. <laughs> now I'm going to show you something that will present a bit of a problem. If we have a couple of break lines in here and we refresh the page, you'll see that this is messed up. Now, let me just add the two back in there. If we add in more, the content will now be bigger than the navigation. And as you can see here, that footer color kind of extends. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create faux columns, which are basically false columns. And to do this in CSS, we're going to create a margin from the bottom 
of a very large negative number. And it can be anywhere from, you know, a hundred up to a couple thousand, but you want it to be at least over a couple thousand just to make sure that, you know, if your page is long enough, then nothing's going to happen. So we can create it like this. Something big, again, it's not really going to make much of a difference. And to offset that, we're going to add a padding of the same size. So, as you can see here, the navigation extends all the way down. So we're going to do that for both the navigation and the content. Now, you can see that they're insanely long and they each have the same height. But as you can see here, this number four is kind of hidden. So what we're going to do in this container, as you can see the container holds the navigation and content. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make the overflow that's that insanely long column, we're going to make that hidden. Now if we refresh the page you'll see that the two columns are equal and the footer is still visible. Just to prove that this works, I'm just going to have the number two in there and I'm going to add a couple more break lines to the content. Refresh the page and you'll see that just the two is in the navigation and three is, well, three and all the break lines are in the content. Now, if we just go to view source, you'll see everything there. That concludes this part of the tutorial for right now. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over very basic PHP uh, ideologies, I guess. Simple things that you'll need to know for creating your game. So, I will see you in the next tutorial.